we are back once again in Call of the Wild the Angler, and if you caught the last video, you may recall that I mentioned at the end trying to learn more about the jigging technique before we came out here into this game again, and after a couple hours of trying it out, I decided to compile a list of everything that I've learned, and I'll put that list on screen right now. That is it. I did not learn a single thing after a couple hours of trying. Didn't catch a fish, didn't get a bite, nothing at all like that. So I decided to, at that point, shift gears. Future Flantro here. I recorded this video prior to Friday's livestream in which we were actually able to figure out how to do the jigging technique. So that video will actually be tomorrow doing a little bit of that. But this video turned out to be quite fun in its own right, so I wanted to continue with that today. And I went ahead and started grinding for the most expensive spinning setup. So after a few hours of that, we now have for our fourth rod, this setup right here. We have the most expensive spinning rod, the most expensive spinning reel, 22 pound fluorocarbon, and right now we're just running with the spinner bait. I also bought a lot of different lures and stuff to try because what I want to do today is rent a boat and try fishing in some moving water. So I think it's cool that we can actually take a boat up the river as well. And that is gonna be what we do. So. I'm really not sure where we got a hold of this thing still, I did not figure that out, but I do like the look at this boat better than the original. Got kind of a digital camo thing going on. And maybe where the river kind of widens out here around the bend, that could be a good spot to start. So we'll get to see just how good this rod and reel combination is. I think we'll just kind of cast out past that rock. And actually, 28 meters for that. I would have expected to cast farther. Maybe there's something to that, this specific combo, and, and maybe with that lure. The last one we were able to cast to about 31 meters. Not a huge difference there, but I would have guessed with the more expensive equipment we could cast farther. In theory, that shouldn't matter much, especially from a boat. So we'll see if our spinnerbait's going to get us anything. Ooh. I don't know what that was that just surfaced. It looked like maybe a smallmouth bass, but we also, at that same time, hooked, I think, a rainbow trout. Is that what that was? It was a little bronze. By the way, you can see we got this coat here, which you can't buy. Apparently, it's something that you just unlock as you go. Now, the weird thing is, it never like came up showing that we unlocked it. It just appeared in the inventory, and I decided to run with it. Now, not sure about our sunglasses choice today, so that may change by the time we're done, but that is interesting. I wonder... Where did that bass or whatever that was go? It, it wasn't far from the boat, so maybe we can just do a little flip cast here and get him back up to the surface. That is not him, but that is a way bigger rainbow if that's what I'm seeing right. We're not very far from the boat, so this may not be the fight that it could otherwise be. That looks huge. That's pretty neat to see come swimming in and hit the lure. Let's kind of see. I mean, it, we didn't get to see what the tension might do. That is a diamond rainbow trout out of the river. I've got a lot of rainbow trout, and honestly, we've been very close. This must be just above diamond, because I've been in that 17-pound weight range before with them. But to get it out of moving water, even slow moving water like this, is really, really cool. Now I wish I went back and changed my sunglasses, because it actually doesn't look as bad at that angle. I mean, look at the size of that fish. I mentioned in, I think it was our first video, and by the way, it's so big that the fin is clipping through our coat just a little bit, but I mentioned like there was a, a lack of like life in the eyes and stuff. Something about this one, it doesn't look as bad. Maybe it's the sun hitting the eye. I actually think it looks pretty good, but let's uh, take one more screenshot just in case like eye blinks or anything. I don't even know if the characters do, but just to have an extra one. We'll go ahead and actually screenshot this page as well since we have the diamond rank there. That is pretty darn cool. That's really sim. I wish there was... I think I've said this before too. I wish there was a release animation. I would love even just the, the sound of the fish hitting the water. Just something to indicate that we did release a fish. But what a weird way to catch a diamond rainbow. One, the plan today was not to be doing this. But also, we only cast it there because I swear it was like a smallmouth bass or something that came up first. And then a way bigger rainbow comes and shocks us. Oh, that's going to be a little bit better. 20 meters away, although it can't be very big because we're just pulling in at will right now. Was that a mountain whitefish? 
I'm surprised how well we can see some of the fish in the water. That, that's a juvenile largemouth bass. I love that there are juvenile fish in this game. Explains why he was so easy to reel in. But, uh, 0.66 pounds? Not exactly a monster, but somewhere out in there, I swear I saw actually a really solid mountain whitefish. Well, we yet again, not the same fish that we saw coming up to hit that. At least I don't think. It maybe could have been. Because the dorsal fin on the rainbow is at least kind of similar to the mountain whitefish, but I thought I saw that more kind of triangular fin. It could have just been the angle. But we'll try that again out in that area. I really thought we'd be moving around a little bit more on the boat, but we found ourselves a heck of a spot right here. Now, it does seem as though you can actually fish a spot out, and I think that's what we're seeing here. There's really not many more fish around, and even switching to a swim bait didn't change our results. So, real quick, I wanted to show on the map where we are in case you guys want to check the spot out, just kind of up here on this little bend in the river. Now, when I was just kind of sitting here trying to get another fish, Something really big seemed to surface just over there. So we'll give that a shot real quick, see if anything happens, and then we'll move to a different spot entirely. But I thought it was over here by this vegetation, so we'll give it a try. Whatever it was appears to be gone, so let's go to somewhere entirely different then. Now this could be pretty interesting. That is not what I was remembering, but right at the bottom of the waterfall, we have kind of faster moving water. I actually see a fish out there. And let's, for the sake of just kind of seeing what we can pull out of here, let's go with a constant retrieval lure to start with. This spinnerbait does us pretty well about anywhere we go. A little flip cast to see if we can get its attention. And I think it's going to work. Now, I'm not sure if we can actually get it out of there, but we at least got a strike. I want to keep the rod up because if we run into rocks or anything, and that was a really tiny rainbow, we could actually end up breaking the line. So the reason that I stood up here so high is because if we were to... We can even just do it here. If we end up casting across, we just can't cast. We can't have the lure roll down the side of the bank or anything like that. So I think we better get down here closer and maybe cast kind of upstream. Can we cast that far? Will that work? Let's see if we can pull anything right out of there. Okay. Some kind of waterfall fish over there. Not a particularly big one again. I think it might be another really tiny rainbow. This is actually a pretty decent spot. So... Since we know stuff is in here, and this is kind of what I mean, you can get the line snapping if you run into stuff, and he's just kind of swimming off, and that's actually probably a good thing. He just sort of despawned. So losing a fish due to your line snapping seemingly makes them go away, and I like that specifically because naturally they have at least a hook, if not a full lure stuck in their mouth somewhere, and they're probably not going to be biting again, so good they just seemingly disappear. Let's, even though there's a fish right there, I don't know if that would be the same one. Let's try another method here. I really want to get the spoon lure that we bought to work. If I could get the option to come up. We must have brought it past like four or five different trout. And my guess is the hook size on this one is just too big. So we'll go back to some other options. We're going to have to, for some reason, do it through the backpack now. I'm not sure why we can't use the quick select menu, but I'd like to get some of the other options to work for us. So let's go back to the swim bait. And maybe we'll go upstream some. So I ended up deciding to switch to another spot. And what we ended up finding is a bigger waterfall than we were at at the last area. So I'm looking forward to getting down to the bottom. But I actually want to cast in up here at the top. The other thing is I went back and bought a couple of smaller lures. I think the ones we had were just a little bit too big for what we are encountering up here. So one thing I don't know how I missed is the fact that they actually have these little spinners. So I want to try that out. And I think we'll just kind of cast in right at the start of the faster current here. And it's looking to me like switching lures may have been a good move. Got a trout seemingly coming over here to check it out. And probably the biggest we've seen in this kind of moving water. Definitely came in to actually hit that. So that's actually pretty cool to see. If there is one lure type that we haven't really gotten to mess with that I would use in real life, it would be a spinner, so a silver 5-pound rainbow trout right at the top of the waterfall. And I figure we'll try our new smaller swim bait down here at the bottom. Now, I did see a couple more trout kind of swimming around here, and that is the one thing. I was hoping to maybe see some other fish species, and I know I was at a flowing body of water, 
where I saw salmon. And that kind of gave me the idea to do this fishing trip in the first place, going to rivers and stuff like that. I just can't seem to figure out where that was, but not getting a whole lot of interest in this one either, at least not with the twitching technique. Now there do appear to be some bass in here, and even they don't seem to want anything to do with our swim bait, so I figure maybe it's best to stick with what works and go back to the spinnerbait, and I can see right away right along the side of that rock. That got the bass's interest, so there's no doubt. Spinnerbaits are good for seemingly darn near everything, as we got, I think, our first bass of this outing, and again, this rod is far more than what we need to bring in a bronze largemouth, still a 3.26 pound fish, but probably could look for something a little bit bigger for a rod and reel combo like we have right here. Now, I do like these glasses a little bit, bit better. I did switch those when we went back and got our other lures, but actually maybe this will be a fitting way to wrap this up. This flowing water goes down into a much larger area out in here, and maybe we can do a little bit of casting out into the middle and see what comes out. There we go. I wonder if that is going to be a bass. It definitely is far better than anything that we've caught so far today other than the trout. This might actually require a bit of a fight. It is starting to run the other direction and take a little bit of line. Let's increase our drag a bit here. Kind of help that out. I feel like we're going to be able to bring it back in. Now, I wasn't sure what we might run into in all these cattails. And we're just basically at a standstill here trying to bring him in. But I kind of... That looked really nice. I kind of thought that we could run into some obstacles here and that could be a problem, but I think we're going to be okay as long as we can keep them to our left. I'm not even sure exactly what it is, but it's definitely encouraging to see the tension go into the red. Gotta mean it's a decent sized fish, especially with what we've seen this rod can do. Not quite the fight we had with the northern pike from the previous video, but not half bad, even into 14 meters. Still making it fairly tough, and the thing I don't like is he's kind of going into these cattails where I can't see if there could be any rocks or anything to potentially snap our line, so hopefully we're going to be okay. I still don't know what he is. By the way, the best part is we caught this on a popper. I should say hook this so I don't end up jinxing us, but I think that's the only thing we've hooked today doing anything other than the constant retrieval, so that's a bit of a plus into seven meters now and still making it tough. We should only have to go a couple more meters. And honestly, I don't know if we'll get to see conclusively what it is until we actually land it. Five meters and I just cannot see him. I think if we do a little bit of pumping here, we should be able to get him close enough to pull him out of the water. 2.7 meters and we can. That was a northern bite. A 15 pound gold in fact. Now the difference between that and the fight with the other rod and obviously much weaker line, is massive. I really thought, you know, all the time that we put into getting the bait casting rod and the braid and all that was going to be worthwhile, but realistically, it looks like we could have done the same thing with the spinning tackle. That's pretty cool. I'm really happy with that. We got ourselves a really nice rainbow trout, our first diamond of them, another really solid northern pike, and I was looking at this area right here. It looks really good for bass, and that's kind of why I thought that might be what we hooked into there. That may have even been one. I was going to wrap up here, but let's try one more. I do think that's a bass, and I do think it's interested in our popper here. If that is a bass, it's a pretty good one. It looks fairly good size. Just going to turn back. I don't know if we got into the wrong technique there. Not nearly as difficult as bringing in the pike. But I mean, a pretty solid smallmouth, a 5.27 pound gold there as well. But that's what I was thinking when I came into this area. We are now kind of at a point where some of the, the top fish on my list of diamonds that I wanted have been accomplished. Golden trout and the rainbow trout were definitely high up there. Having caught a gold pike and a gold smallmouth in that short amount of time in this area, this might be a spot to come back to and try to fish for some other diamonds and see if we can cross more off the list. But on that note, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.